Hello friends, welcome back to Graceful Living and welcome to all of you that are new here today. In today's video, I am doing something completely different than I have ever done before. I am going to be talking about a DIY that, well, I can't even say we did. Ronnie did most of the work, but why I want to share it with you is because we went the easy route. Now, if you have been around my channel for very long, you will know that I talk about being completely impatient when it comes to doing any type of crafting or small DIY that I get myself into. If it isn't done in five minutes or less, then I really don't want to do it. Now, that's a little bit of a stretch, I understand there might be six minute craft that I will do or a 10 minute craft I'll do, but I really do not like to waste time on getting things done. I will try to do it the easiest way possible. So we came across a beautiful antique buffet. Now it was not very beautiful when we found it, but the structure was absolutely gorgeous to my eye. I had been looking for a piece and I found this one on Facebook Marketplace and I absolutely love the piece. So I asked Ronnie if we could go take a look at it. And when we got there, Ronnie is very, very particular and Ronnie knows how much time, energy, and work is going to go into something. He just has that superpower that I do not have. I'm thinking, no big deal. It's a mess, but we can paint it. And, you know, it's going to look gorgeous. It's all it needs is paint. Yeah. And yeah, that wasn't necessarily the case when it came to Ronnie. So he looked at it and it was just like, baby, I don't know. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. One of the feet was actually off of it. And so long story short, we ended up leaving it there. Um, the lady was super sweet and she goes, well, I've got somebody else coming. So no problem. Well, <clears throat> I said, you know what? If they don't come, let me know, just in case we do change our mind. Well, they didn't show up. She thought about keeping the piece herself, but her husband said no, because the piece was so big. And that is another thing I'm gonna tell you, until we put that piece in the house, I, I didn't realize how big it was. Got it in the house and I was like, oh my gravy, that is huge. But anyway, so going back, <laughs> Ronnie's looking at it and he's like, okay, go ahead and get it. And this will be our first big DIY project that we try to accomplish. And the whole idea of using oven cleaner to strip furniture was going around at the time. It was brand new. And that was my thought. Let's just use it. And Ronnie was like, no, that doesn't sound like a good idea. This is just, we're going to have to be patient and take time and we had it here for maybe i don't even know if we had it here a whole day and i was like can we paint it yet he's like no we've got to be patient so we got all the supplies we got sanding paper we've got tools we've just different things that he thought that we would be able to use to start on it he did look at some different youtube channels to try and get an idea of what we needed to do and he is so patient and I adore him for that because it means he's super patient with me and I know living with me is not easy because I am just a little bit crazy when it comes to stuff and honestly super controlling. If it's in my head that it's going to work and I see it in my head, I'm so sure it's going to work and we just need to do it that way and get it done and he is not that way and even though he's not, he's very patient with me. So we get home and he's, you know, dealing with it and such. And I keep telling him, baby, let's just try the oven cleaner. Let's just try it on the back, see how it works. So he gave in as he normally does, probably just because he gets tired of hearing me, baby, let's just try it. And so we try it on the back. You guys, it did such an amazing job. It stripped it off with really, I mean, I'm not gonna say no work because Ronnie worked very hard to get this buffet from what it looked like to what it looks like now. So let me show you the before pictures and then we'll come back and we'll kind of talk about it a little bit more. 
okay, here's the piece in the original state that we purchased it in. And as you can see, it is stunning to begin with, even though it's a mess. Now it is a very strong and sturdy piece and we found out it is about a hundred years old. Now the foot was missing, but the young lady did attach it before we came back to purchase. So I'm very grateful for that. Okay, so as you can see, the piece itself is absolutely beautiful. Now in the next clip that I'm going to show you, it's Ronnie talking a little bit about what he thinks we need to do to make sure that the piece looks pristine. Now, in my opinion, I wasn't necessarily going for pristine. I was going for a vintage look. Now, that's kind of where Ronnie and I sometimes have to kind of come to a compromise because he's thinking one thing, I'm thinking the complete opposite. In my head, it's set, and I'm sure in his head it's set as well, but neither one of us can see what's inside each other's head, so it makes it a little bit difficult. But I try to just kind of think about and listen to what he suggests because I know that he has a lot more knowledge when it comes to projects like this than I do. Because again, if I can grab a can of spray paint, then it's gonna make it all better. Obviously that's not gonna be the case for this project. So listening to him, taking his advice into consideration was key for me. In the end, we did not take as much time to make sure that every nail hole and that every piece that had been fixed previously was back into perfect condition because it would have just taken so long. And I really did want a more vintage feel and look to it. It did not bother me the little nail holes were showing. And I wasn't really going to be using this piece for heavy storage. I actually hadn't even considered using it for storage until we did bring it into the house and it's been a nice little hideaway for some glass things that I have a hard time storing out in the garage or at our storage unit. Things that I need on a daily or at least on days when we have company come over, it's easy to grab those things out of there. If you've been around for a while, you know that I did a coffee bar video not long ago. Now I don't keep all of that out and up every day of the week because it would just be in my family's way throughout the day. So that's something that I will put together when I know we're going to have people visit. So I keep a lot of the apothecaries, the cloches, and even a drink dispenser in that now because it's right there and it's ready and it's easier to grab and get out. I used to keep that in the pantry that's in our laundry room and it was a little bit harder to get it in and out. But again, it's not in my family's way and that's my main priority when I do decorate and do things like that. I don't want to necessarily keep things in their way on a daily. But anyways, let's go ahead and go to this clip. This clip is going to begin where he's actually used the oven cleaner on the drawers and he's going to explain a little bit. So let's go there. Hello, Dina's channel. We're doing our DIY project. So I think this has got to go, baby. This is horrible. That's horrible. So we're gonna, I'm gonna that and right here, this is pretty beat up. We're, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, so we'll have to do something there to inset it and then probably put a couple pieces along here, strips of, of small fur to bind this together because the bottom is gonna be loose. Mm. So if you put any pressure on here, it's gonna, it's gonna pull away. So I can't believe how that worked though. Oh, well, it's worked great so far. Yeah. and. I just did mostly the spots where we're gonna try to stain and the rest we can just clean with simple green and get it ready for painting. And I would paint everything on the outside. I did wash out the insides to see how it would, if they'd come clean or not. I'm gonna drink my coffee for a minute, take a break. Love you. Love you. Brooklyn's decided to join me. So as you can see, what Ronnie was doing is he was mainly trying to just let me know what he thought we were going to need to do to create a more stable and aesthetic piece. But like I said, we decided to go with all the little flaws and just keep them. And I really love that about it. I love that it looks like it's 
been used and I guess kind of abused over the years, but I'm sure there are tons and tons of memories that come with that. Now, I'm sure that you heard us also speak about painting it because in the beginning, we did think about just painting it I'm sure you can guess what color black i was so excited i thought it would look absolutely beautiful i had thought about leaving the legs like the spindle part just in a more natural state and then painting the rest of it black i thought that would be gorgeous we actually changed our mind and thought about painting the main part of it black and then leaving the legs and a couple of the drawers in the natural state which i think again would be beautiful but in the back of my mind and also in the back of ronnie's he remembered that i had wanted to paint the wall in our dining area black and thinking about that well if we paint the furniture black as well it's really not going to stand out and be the piece that it really is and so we did consider and changed our mind once again and went with just the natural state. And when I'm talking natural state, what he did is he finished taking off all the layers of paint, varnish, and whatever had built up. There was actually some gold leaf that I think came along with it when it was brand new. I am sure this piece was absolutely gorgeous when it was first put together and purchased with that gold leafing on it and just the richness of the wood itself. And then along the way, it did get painted and things like that. Now, there were a couple things that we could not put back on it because they were so brittle. So if you see in the first couple pictures, there's kind of an embellishment around the cabinet doors that I've used as decor now here in the home, but we couldn't attach them back because they were very brittle and actually broken in a couple places. So we opted not to do that. But Ronnie went ahead and used the oven cleaner to get it all cleaned off. He did have to scrub and use a couple tools just to get some of the gunk out of, you know, crevices and whatever. And then also the gold leaf didn't come completely off with the oven cleaner. So if you ever do a project like this, just remember that. I think even now some of the gold leaf is on there, which to me is completely fine because again, it's a memory of what it was at one point. So I'll go ahead and let you kind of take a look at the process and just to let you know, I'm, I'm doing this video. So if you are ever fearful about completing something like this, I know I have been. I am very fearful about getting things wrong, failing at something and having to put out any type of money and it not go right is just a big fear of mine. I think my OCD sets in and a lot of a lot of people know of OCD is keeping things clean and tidy and organized, which I truly enjoy doing. But one of the bad things with being OCD is that controlling tendency and fear. You're fearful of things that not everybody is. And so fear of failing at this, fear of spending extra money, fear of it not coming out like it looks in my head, all those fears are just flowing around and kind of driving you crazy but this really worked and like i said i know ronnie worked so hard to get it done but this was a much easier process so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the footage that i collected over time and see how this all came together Once Ronnie got a good coverage of the oven spray sprayed onto the piece he was working on, he did let it set out in the yard 
for 30 to 45 minutes depending on the piece and how bad it was. Once that process took place, then he went out, used a soft bristle brush to scrub off the chemical and what the chemicals had loosened. As he scrubbed, he also kind of washed it all away, making sure to not use too much water, but obviously doing this on a very sunny and warmer day helped quite a bit. Now we only had one piece of the furniture warp during this process and actually we didn't find it out until much later it was really no big deal it was a piece underneath the top drawer and ronnie was able to just cut that piece out now he once again kind of did steps in this process so he took care of the upper piece first and now he's working on the base the bottom legs and things like that things that are more intricate that he needs to really pay attention to down here is where he ran into the gold leafing and just a lot of intricate detail where paint is harder to get out and this is where the oven spray really came in handy because it was able to get into all the nooks and crannies and really loosen up all the paint and grime that had been accumulated over the years. Still have my little friend with me. She's made herself quite comfortable on the back of my chair. But as you can see, the oven cleaner did a terrific job at getting most of the gunk and paint and varnish gone. We could not believe how well this product did on the wood. Now, there's still all those small intricate pieces that Ronnie wanted to kind of dive into and do a little bit more work on, which I'm so grateful for because those intricate pieces are where a lot of the paint and things were left. So he did a little bit more work on that with sanding and different tools just to try and get it looking as best as he could. 
he did such a good job and like i said before he's so patient and thankfully he is not fearful about diving into a project and getting it done and his knowledge level is just kind of off the chart in knowing what he needs to do now he's not a professional i'm not saying that but he sure did a wonderful job and we ended up with a beautiful beautiful piece Once Ronnie was completely satisfied with his job, he went ahead and moved on to the next step, which was using an oil to just kind of rejuvenate the wood. Now you will see exactly how dry this piece was. Once the oil got onto the wood, it just soaked it up and became such a beautiful, dark and vibrant piece it is absolutely gorgeous. I kept telling Ronnie I had no idea the color would become so incredibly rich. So using this oil is pretty much all he did. And then he did go ahead, come back in with a matte polyurethane to just try and make sure that it was protected. Now I purchased these knobs at Hobby Lobby for $3.49 a piece and they ended up being just perfect. I love them up against the color that the piece is now and it's just added to that vintage feel and look that I was going for. So I'm very happy that I was able to drive to our local store and find just enough. I think we needed eight and that is exactly the number they had in stock. So I put these on. That was, I guess, kind of my whole contribute to this other than coming out, taking pictures or filming a little bit, maybe bringing out a snack or drink to my husband. But other than that, he did this and it is absolutely beautiful. Baby. You're welcome. Man, Dad, I cannot believe you transformed this thing. It looked like a wreck. Yeah, it's still a wreck, but we redeemed it. I tell Mom it's deeply theological. We redeemed it. Oh, yeah. How yeah. does he even turn compliments into theological discussions? So we could fix everything, but we did upgrade it.
Okay, friends, I am going to bring this video to a close, but before I go, I do want to thank you for coming along with me. I know this video was very different, but I hope that it was a very informative video. I hope that it lent you some inspiration to maybe go ahead and tackle something like this that you have been wanting to, knowing that you can do it. And I hope that you understand that if you do deal with fear, you are not alone. I know it is so much easier said than done when we talk about just overcoming it and giving it up and knowing that the Lord is going to take care of us. There's just something about fear that kind of overcomes a person and it makes it a little bit harder. So know that you are not alone. I struggle with it and I am constantly going to him and I'm really, really, really thankful that I do have him because I know I would not make it through these times if I did not have him to rely on. And honestly, I tell him that each and every day that I am so thankful that I can rely on him because he knows that I need him for this. This is not something that I am proud of in any way. I hate that I am fearful. I hate that I deal with this, but it is who I am. And as much as I try to keep it 100% gone, it just has never worked that way. But that does not ever make me feel like the Lord is not there for me, that he does not help me through each and every step. I know that we have a choice. We can choose to live in fear or we can choose to live out of it. And I choose to live out of it. I know that, like I said, I deal with it all the time, but I choose to pray and seek him and his understanding and his wisdom and his comfort and his joy, his peace, everything that he can offer me in his word. The Bible says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And that is exactly what I do. And I encourage you, if you are dealing with this as well, to do the same, put your trust in him. But for now, I am going to wish you all a wonderful rest of your week. Remember to stay safe, be blessed, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.